What are you doing to this truck? What? The other day it was all together. It was almost new. It's a six, seven under the hood. It's an 11 truck. Why did you gut it? I'm making it better, man. Listen, I got a plan. You ready? Three words. Storm Trooper. Well, I have two words, but whatever. You know where I'm going with this, right? No, I don't. Big, huge white truck with black accents. Think about it. Stormtrooper. Oh, stormtrooped out versus murdered out. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. right? No, right, I'm so digging it. So don't worry about all the missing stuff. That grill and everything that used to be on the front, that's all getting powder coated. It's going to be white. It's you look already awesome. sent it out. That's handled, right? All this, boom, obviously out of the way. We're going to replace all that as well. Now, brings us down here. That's got to go. It's going to go because it's not going to be all white if we leave that, right? Your daddy's two-tone truck now. <laughs> can't right. have that. Now, look, this is the key to it all because you have not seen anything like this. No, this looks awesome, man. This is the Pure Performance Pre-Runner Kit. It's got the 8-inch lift, but I've only seen it in black before, man. How did you get it in white? I have some stroke around here, man. I made some <laughs> phone calls. I said, guys, it comes in black, but we would really like to have the white one. We want a one-off, right? Can you hook me up? They said, who is this? I said, Matt Steele. Who? I said, Bruno's co-host. They said, Boom! Drop my name again, didn't it. you? Yeah, it worked this time. You know, usually. Be careful who you drop it with. <laughs> I know. I'm but I, I gotta say, man, I'm mildly impressed here because this isn't like you. This is like you actually thought this out. What are you talking about, dude? I don't know why you're so surprised. Really? I mean, I'm right where I want to be with this entire project, dude. Just hitch on and follow me. I, I'm right? jumping on your back on this one, bud. All right, this is actually where I got started because back here I had to get rid of the stock leaf spring, sure. right? Because the truck's got to go up, but he's still going to be using it and he's going to be putting UTVs and everything in the back of the truck. Could be a couple thousand pounds. So he needs something that's going to get the height and still hold up to all that weight. Yeah, and this Atlas spring is a perfect you know, solution to that problem because they work with the guys at Pure Performance all the time. It's made in the USA and it's got the capacity to handle all the weight, the whole mat steel fan club in the back and give us a <laughs> six inches lift back here to go with the eight inches up front. So this is a perfect combination. You know, the problem is, dude, it's a lot of work to do by yourself and You're I'm surprised me. that you actually pulled it off. I got it done. I got, did you not see all the missed calls? I did. Out of I mean, I was going right to voicemail. I, I did on purpose. Problem. You know, I'll help you with the jack. All right, so here's this stock factory block. We can slide this right back in there. Right? All right. And it's got the little locator pin on the bottom, so that'll center. It's not going to go anywhere. And let me get that over spring. a little yeah, bit. Be yeah, be careful, dude. Be Watch careful. your fingers. I, got, I got only got 10 of them. All right, you got it. You got all it. Right. There you go. So far, so good, but the reality is anybody can rip stuff apart. It's all about putting it back together is what matters. Why are you always attacking me like that? Like, I haven't done anything yet, right? So got everything out of the way, like you said, but then that brought us up here to this upper mount for the coil spring. So the only thing I had to do right here, there was a little nub that came down that kind of centers the whole deal. I cut that, get it out of the way, and stuck this bracket up in there and bolted it all in. That's going to be the top for the new coilover that's going in. Right back down here is the new relocator bracket for the track bar because that's going to move down as the suspension goes up. You know what I mean? That way we don't screw up the whole geometry of the whole suspension system. But other than that, you're right, I haven't really done anything. So I'm back okay. up to speed. Yes, exactly. Uh, All right, I get to join the party now. And the, the best thing about this party is the fact that he did the hard work. The one cutting he had to do, one piece of it, Matt's already done it. The rest of the kit all bolts into place. That's one of the nice things about this Pure Performance kit. So next thing it's mounting this new control arm bracket. So what we're going to do is use the same existing mounting location here and off the back of this hold on a second this cross member so just a matter of get these nuts out of the way and we can utilize the same bolt and bolt the new one in place and the whole thing idea here is to make sure we maintain the proper geometry and we're going to do that by using all this new bracketry we got from pure performance as far as these control arms go, the longer ones go on the bottom and the shorter ones go on the top. Now, when you install these and you get everything tied in, it's real important to have that axle centered, and that has everything to do with the length of these arms, and it's adjustable. So the instructions call for a certain distance from the center of the hole here to the center of the hole right here. And on the long side, it calls for 37 and a half inches, which is right there where it's at. And on the short side, it's calling for 32 and 5 sixteenths. So that is tied in and we've got everything good. Now to adjust these, it's pretty simple. You can just spin this end and bit it wherever you need it to be and then lock it down. Once you get that ready to go, you can go ahead and install these little zert fittings right there. That way you can grease these bushings and that'll keep them lasting for a long time. Now a good little idea is when you put this arm in, make sure that the zert fitting is on the bottom side. That way it's real easy to get to when you want to grease it. All right, so we've got all our hardware is in set in place and nice and loose on our bracketry. This way we've got some wiggle room we go to put these Whoa. control arms in. Oh, hold on, I got this one, bud. Okay. Yeah, you get the heavy one. Oh, I know. I know. So we'll squeeze this up into here. And there we go. The whole idea, we keep it loose, 
we can get everything set in place and tighten it all down. And one thing you guys want to do is make sure that once we get this stuff in place is tighten down these jam nuts. That's a big mistake a lot of people do is you roll down the road, you see this stuff loose. And what that's going to do is put a bit of a preload on the threads here so they don't wear out going down the road. So our brackets in place, the control arms are hanging, they're ready to rock. The next thing for us to do is mount up our coil over springs. Before we get these in place though, we need to take a little bit of a break, but this will go like that. Hey, what do you want to do with that old stuff? Throw it in the blow up bin, dude. Ah, I like that idea. Yeah, blow up bin. Cool. Always good. Let me file this then. I like this print on here too. Not to geek out too much about the whole Stormtrooper thing, but welcome back to Truck U. So today it's all about Project Stormtrooper. You know, big white truck with black accents. It's gonna look awesome. But like Bruno said earlier in the day, there was nothing wrong with this truck. I mean, it was a 2011 F-250. It was fine, right? We didn't have to go tearing it all up, but it's gonna be so much better when we're done. We're talking about big white truck, black accents, awesome look but it's all about performance as well. And that is where this comes in with this eight inch suspension lift kit from Pure Performance. So it's got the cool look, whether he's driving off the road or on the road, this truck's gonna drive like a dream. The whole idea with these reservoirs is to give you control. What it does, it allows the oil from heating up inside the shock. It keeps it nice and cool. It's kind of like putting a radiator on an engine, keeps it running cool, keeps it running more efficient. Same type of deal is going on with these reservoirs. So this is going to be the ultimate setup for this truck. All right, so with the coil over, the shock and the control arms all hanging in place and ready to go, all we have to do is slide that front axle back under here and start buttoning everything back up, right? But before we do that, we do have some tabs we need to attach to that yeah, axle. Yeah, let's get on that. We went ahead and TIG welded these brackets into place. Now these are the lower coil spring brackets right over here. You can MIG weld those in, that would be just fine. We just feel like you have a little bit better control with the TIG welder and we have one so that's why we went that route. Now you might have seen some smoke boiling off during that whole thing. All that was was a little bit of the powder coat burning off. No problem, no need to call the fire department or anything like that. But then we can run this bolt down here and we can tie in the coilovers right there. Right on the back side is the lower stock shock mount right there. So that'll be there. And then on the back side of the whole axle housing, that's where the arms will tie back in too. So I can really envision how this is all going to be tied back together. All I've got to do is get this over there. Hmm. So we've got our lower shock mounts welded onto our axle assembly. That's all set in place. We've got it pretty well aligned right now. The idea is, is you know, we want to do this in steps to get everything attached once again. We've got our upper control arms. Those are set in place. Now what we want to do is go ahead and roll the pinion up with a floor jack to get the lower ones there. I think we're pretty close right now. Yep, yep. Hold on right there. Right. And what you do is you do either side in place. And what that's doing is giving you the right clearance to go ahead and get it set. Once the control arms are all tied down, we're gonna go ahead and actually lower the truck down to get our shocks into the mount right here. I mentioned the track bar relocation bracket, which is right here. So the end of the track bar with the bushing will fit in right here and that will lay across and the other end will button in right here. And that'll keep everything good and that'll keep the axle from sliding left to right. So by the time everything is all hooked up in here, we'll have a really good functioning suspension system that's not gonna go anywhere. All right, we gotta hurry up and wrap this all up because those bumpers just got back from powder coat. Nice, right? it's about time. All right. That's good. You got this done yet? No, not yet. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> there we go. The bumpers are back from powder coat and they look good, man. Yeah. I'm really starting to like this whole trooped out thing you got going. I'm telling you this is coming together, isn't it? Well, before we get it in place though, we've got some room to work with and we're gonna take advantage of that because you roll around the back of the truck, you'll see something that's a bit of an eyesore we got from the factory and that's this exhaust tip. This is what Ford gave us to work with, but I think we've got a much better option that'll replace this. This is gonna look much better, man. We got this tip from RBP Performance and we've got stuff from them for the front, the back, the sides. So it's really gonna help complete this whole thing. All right, I need you to hold on to this to keep this thing from moving around on me while I start cutting. Oh, this is not a good idea. Oh, hold on. You might want to get your... Uh... Dear Heavenly Father. All right, here we go. You are up next. That was smooth. Nice. You almost cut that like a man. <laughs> almost, <Very> right? Nice. <laughs> you got any burrs on there, dude? Yeah, I think I got one right here. Do a little test fit, but that's it. When you cut so perfectly, you have no burrs. Exactly. All right, this should slide on pretty good. We might have to do a little finishing touch, but look at that. All right, there's where we're going with this whole look, right? Very nice. Now we need to go to break, but when we come back, Project Stormtrooper continues. You got fingerprints on. 
I did. Well, I'm all dirty. Hey, welcome back. With our Ford Super Duty down on the ground, we get an opportunity to take a look at the 6.7 liter engine that we mentioned a little bit earlier. Now, why this engine is significant is because it's replacing two older engines that had a lot of troubles, the 6.0 and the 6.4. So for 2011, Ford decided we're going to bring our engine program in-house and completely redesign this engine. The result is what they call the Scorpion, because if you take away all the air cleaners and all the mess, what it looks like is a Scorpion all coiled up ready to strike because you've got a turbo sitting right on top of the engine block. Now one of the problems with a turbocharged engine is the fact that you've got turbo lag. It's a measurable time for when you step on the gas so this thing actually accelerates away. Well, the one way you can reduce that turbo lag is to run shorter exhaust housings because you have less air to fill, it's easier to fill up the, the engine itself and accelerate away with boost. So how you can do that is running two separate turbos, one on either side real close to the cylinder head itself. This way it's got a real short exhaust tube. Well, if you look under, under this engine right here, you can see that there's a lot of stuff going on. There isn't room in terms of packaging to put two turbos in. So what Ford did is they mounted one turbo in the center and they reversed the flow of the engine. Traditionally, you've got the air coming in and going out to the outside. So what they've done now is they've got the air coming in from the outside out through the inside. So we can run a real short exhaust tube, which allows the thing to spool up really quick, reduces that turbo lag. The result is an engine that makes 50 horsepower more than the 6.4 that are replaced from 350 to 400 and gives you 800 foot pounds of torque. Now we're ready for the installation of the new RBP grill, but the first thing we need to do is get all that plastic structure out of the existing stock grill. So we hit the thicker parts with the saws on, we trimmed up the smaller parts with the air saw, and got it ready to go. We had to leave a lip on each side on the left and right, that way we have something to fasten to. Once we get the stuff out of here, we can attach the new grill. This is the new RX3 grill from RBP. It's made of all 304 stainless. You've got this dual stainless woven mesh right there. It's got a nice look to it. And then, of course, you've got this studded perimeter. I mean, this thing looks awesome. Pardon me for one second, please. Bruno, you. help. Oh, there you are. Hey, thanks, man. We flip this over. Cool. All right. Take a look at this. This thing looks nasty. And by nasty, I actually mean really good, right? <laughs> Just for clarification. Now, when we cut this inside out, we left this little lip right here on each side so these hooks can come around and we hook those right on there and we'll tighten those down and that's good so that'll give us our support on the ends and then down here on the bottom and the top we've got these little screws and these clips so we just mount these in, run them right through, run the screw into the clip right up there and right here and that baby's not going anywhere dude. Cool. Hey, I've been working on those side steps as well man, those are about ready to go on once we get this set in place. Cool, let's do it. So now it's time to add some black accents to the side of this truck. You know, Matt, from the beginning, his whole theme was to have it all stormtrooped out with some black accents. Well, he killed the front grill. Nice work, buddy. Now it's got the RBP Performance matching RX3 side step. You can see it's got that wire mesh, black textured. It's going to look good. It's going to be functional. And you know what? It's really easy to install. So you, there's no cutting, no drilling. All you do is add on a couple extra U-clips. You know, they're U-nuts, they give you, you use the factory ones across the bottom, the new ones across the top, and this should bolt into place, and we should be able to move on here shortly. The way that the step kind of comes down a little bit, it's hitting the arm on the lift, so we can put the bottom bolt in, right, and just hold it yeah. in place. Once we get the truck off the lift, we can tighten it all up. No big deal. It's all under control. All Don't right, you cool. worry. Hey, what about this gray here, man? Is this under control? Because I'm a little worried. Don't you worry about that either. <laughs> I have a plan for that. All I right, as long as you got a plan. I'm good. I don't know if it's going to work, but I got a plan. Hey, welcome back. You know, this is our favorite part of the day because you know when you got the wheels and tires on, the job is almost done. And that's where we're at with the Stormtrooper truck. You know, Matt's idea was to go Stormtrooper it out, white it out with black accents, and that's exactly what we've done, and it looks good. You've got that gray stripe is gone. We've got black accents all the way around. The decals are gone off the sides yep. and the back, and it's all about these wheels and tires. Man, this is the finishing piece right here. I'm digging these tires, man. Now, this is the Interco SSM16. It's the 40-inch version. And and you take a look at this, and really what it was done specifically for was to bridge the gap between an all-terrain tire and a mud tire. So when you're going down the road, it's not going to be obnoxiously loud. When you make the turn onto the dirt or the mud, you still have a performance tire that's going to get you through the stuff. That's the whole idea. Plus, look at the bullet theme. You know, you got the ammunition all the way around. That's awesome. That looks really cool. What's awesome is the wheels that they're mounted on. You know, these are 20-inch RBP Assassin wheels. Not only do they look good because they got that gloss black with those machine accents, but they're lightweight, one-piece cast aluminum, and that's always a nice added bonus, man. This is a nice finishing touch for this truck. 